Okay, this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while. What I'm going to do is uh, give you one way to take a Tudor metal field goalpost or one of their speed turf goalposts and work with it so its dimensions will be accurate when used with a scale size field. Let's first take a look at some of the tools we'll be using for our crafting project. What I find most useful is this hobby size miter box saw for making straight cuts. Of course what's also useful for cutting plastic for this type of work is an exacto knife or a box cutter and then a Dremel. The next thing that's essential for our project is tubes that come from a company called Evergreen Scale Models. These are hollow plastic tubes and we'll be using them to modify the uprights and the crossbar on the field goal posts. They can be purchased relatively inexpensively directly from evergreenscalemodels.com or they can be also be found in some hobby stores. So obviously we're going to need something to measure or make measurements accurately and that's where the engineering scale comes in. It's generally accepted in our hobby that the Fab Five figures in the scale field is a half inch equals a yard, which in, in other words is a half inch equals three feet. Well, on the engineering scale, we'll use this 60 side. And this line here between the zero and two, that would be one foot. There's two, three, four, so on. So where does the Tudor goal post, uh, the, the metal field goal post and the speed turf, wh where does that fall short exactly when we're talking about scaling it to the Fab Five figure? Well, based on what I was talking about before, there's 10 feet. So that's spot on because the uh, from the base of the goal post to the crossbar should be 10 feet so that's fine but the inner dimension from upright to upright should be 18 foot 6 and if we put the scale up against that we're getting about 16 feet all right so we're two foot six off there and then the upright I think a couple of years ago the NFL raised the uprights to 35 feet but the upright on this is only it's, it's 18 feet maybe 17 and a half something like that above the upright so uh, above the crossbar so um, these are the two modifications we're going to want to make we're going to want to increase the width of the crossbar and increase the height of the uprights so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a cut here and make a cut there. You can use an X-Acto, you can use a box cutter, you can use scissors. Just try to make it as straight as you can and maybe come in about a quarter of an inch on either side. Like I've done there. Now you'll begin to work with the Evergreen Scale Model tubing. And you'll notice the numbers on the top. 227 and 225. You need these because these are the sizes that will fit over the crossbar. This one fits over the crossbar. This one fits over the uprights. We're going to work with the crossbar first. So we're going to line up the tubing with the 227 tube with the engineering scale. And we're going to make a mark where it would be 20 feet. 
Make sure you mark it accurately. Measure twice, cut once. Once you've marked the tube and you're satisfied it's accurate, lay it in the miter box along the straight cut line. The tube will cut easily with this saw. Now that we have our 20 foot crossbar piece, we're presented with a little bit of a problem. As you can see, you can't really slip it on here because of this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut the 20 foot piece in half. So we'll make a mark. Well, we made it there, but we're going to make a mark. At 10 feet. And then we'll cut that in half. Now we have the two pieces of the 20 foot crossbar cut in half, but still when you slip it on here, if you don't account for that little bump here, you're going to have a gap between the two pieces as you slip them on the side. So I've cut a little notch, I've done it to the other side as well, and you know you can just use uh, an exacto knife, just be careful when you're using that. Uh, I've used uh, little toenail clippers. Actually, I, I think I actually did what with this. I actually think I um, used uh, the Dremel to cut the hollow out that, that little spot. And it's not much, but I'll show you in a second here when I put these together how it will fit on. Okay, and now I've slipped both sides of that crossbar piece on, and you can see how it fits perfectly around that little bump. And now we're ready to mess with the uprights. Now, you'll see at the end here, on either side, I cut a little notch again with the Dremel to help the upright lay flush in here and that's going to be important um, when we get the upright completed because the piece that I'm going to slip over the upright on both sides is going to once it's flush here is going to uh, make the dimension about 18 foot 6 which is what we want so you can see the uprights both are pretty much flush with the end, both for aesthetic reasons and once again, like I said, when I put the uh, tube that extends this to the proper height, um, it's going to account for the uh, dimension that I need between the uprights. The 225 tube is the one we're going to use for the uprights and you're going to find that this thing um, fits very snugly onto the onto the tube. You won't need glue for this, uh, honestly. But what we're going to do is, once again, using the engineering scale, we're going to measure 35 feet and then make our measurement and cut. Okay, once again, here we are with the engineering scale, and you can see 35 feet. Make the mark, make your cut, and uh, you'll need two of these, obviously. And then we'll slip these on to the uprights, slip them on to the sides of the crossbar, and be ready to glue. One thing I almost forgot to mention is before you slip this tube on the upright. Cut a little piece off the top of your of each side of the upright and place it in that hole at the top to close that hole up. That's something that would bother me, I know. Um, and then slip it on. 
So we'll do that now. Okay, uh, just to show you, so I took that little top off of the yellow part of the upright and just insert it there on top of the tube and close that up. Now that we've assembled the goal post to our satisfaction, we're going to just double check the measurements and the inside should line up to 18 foot six. And that is about right. And 35 feet for the upright. So another thing you wanna do is you want to cut off this piece right here. And you can either glue a magnet on here or actually what I prefer and um, I think what works probably a little better is putting a putty or one of those removable adhesive dots. This is the adhesive dot I'm talking about. They come in sheets. You can buy these things on Amazon pretty cheaply. And they work pretty much as well as putty and they don't leave a mark if you use them in Basically, you peel off the paper, and, and this is what you're left with, this sticky uh, part right here, which you would put underneath the base of this goal post. Now that you have this part cleaned up here, you're going to want to glue these crossbar pieces on. You're going to want to glue the upright pieces on, and when you do that, Make sure that before you let it harden that you have those upright pieces lined up with a vertical pole here. The goal post has been glued together and looks straight. And so the, now the next step will be to use uh, the Tamiya surface primer. And then my personal preference is to use the fluorescent yellow on goalposts. So I'll, I'll use either de the deco art or uh, this enamel. And then we'll have a look at our finished product. So you can use the methods I just showed you to modify the speed turf goalposts as well. The one problem or the one extra step you'll run into is this area here because unlike um, the other goal post it doesn't have a platform that it's resting on so you sort of have to create your own and that's uh so we go ahead and purchase yet another evergreen tube this one is size 229 and then you cut off a length to cover this area like i've done here and this fits very snugly on as well even that up there and and then uh, now that you have a flat surface here you can make your own platform I you can buy these wood pile discs from Hobby Lobby or another hobby shop they look like this and you can just glue that right in the center there and then you're good to go Here's the finished product, and I added a couple coats of Dora Clear Gloss Sealer. Not bad. Let's kick a field goal. Here we go from 50 yards out. The kick is long enough and good. <laughs>